Good morning, CWCC. I couldn't be more excited about who we have with us today. My dear, dear friend, my mentor, someone that matters so much to me in my life, and I always just consider it a privilege and a joy to spend time with her, Christine Bonero. Thank you so much for being with us, President and CEO of Mile High United Way. She's incredible. I'll kick us off by letting Christine talk and do what she does best. So just introduce yourself. I love this. I love this. First of all, the chance to just spend time with you is makes my heart happy, even if we're doing it from our from our homes and our, our offices. Um, I'm counting on the day, friends, sooner rather than later that we'll be together with a, a glass of glass of wine. And what I really love about this, thank you for inviting me, is that it's Women's History Month. And given that you are one of my favorite women on the planet, um, I'm inspired by you every single day and what you have been doing for women in Colorado and what you've been doing for the chamber. Um, it's a perfect time for us to connect, even if it's not in person. Oh my gosh, it so is. And when I think about, I, you know, you, you get glimmers of, you know, when I'm being interviewed or talking to people that I mention your name all the time of like who, you know, what's, who's a woman in your life that has been inspiring to you. You always, always come up in the conversation and you do that for me, but you do that for so many women. So thank you. I've, I don't think I've seen anyone lift women up the way that you do. Um, and just, make us feel confident and that we're unstoppable. And it's probably perfect for your role too, because you do that for the community as well. So I know that you and I both share a commonality of having amazing, strong women that, you know, paved the way for us. And your mother just celebrated a milestone. Tell her, I, I, I love telling this story. I served on the Denver Press Club board with your mother, Patterson, and what a Force. She's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And we do share that as many of us do just unbelievable, amazing mothers. And yeah, last Sunday, my mom celebrated her 90th birthday with the same style and grace that I have watched her my um, entire life and with such grit because I here's the one thing I'm learning, Kristen, um, being 90 is not for the faint of hearts. Let right. me let me tell you, I'm like, oh, this is going to be um, a journey. But I love that I got to have a conversation with my mom about her own career and what and she told me the most amazing story that you will so appreciate also given that it's pay equity day or not pay um yeah, right. equity day of um she was working in um the um in the late 50s in a pr firm in new york um doing the same job sitting next to a man mom my mom was hired First um, in this PR agency, and this man would come to my mom for advice and tips on what to do with clients. And um, mom would see him take her ideas and present them to clients. And one day, um, their paychecks got mixed up. It's when they delivered oh paychecks gosh. by hand. Yeah. And mom didn't look. She just opened it, realized that the paycheck was double, double what her paycheck was and then looked at the name and realized that it wasn't her, but the man sitting next to her, she went to her boss and said, can you help me understand? I was here first, here's what I do. I, I can't I, wait to hear his answer. <laughs> oh, you're gonna love his answer. His answer was, well, you're gonna get married and have a husband who will support you. And, and he's the man of the family and my mother just looked at him and said, what are you talking um, about? And so Kristen, what I love, what I love and what I hate is here we are so many years later, you know, 50 years, 60 years later, actually having almost the same conversation. And that's right. what makes the women's chamber and your work so, and the members so amazing. We're not there yet. And my mom broke so many barriers by saying, this isn't right you know, and, and having these conversations throughout her entire career. But here we are all these years later, in many ways, having the same conversation. 
I know, I know. And it's, it's both frustrating, but then, you know, there are some celebrations to, to have because women like our mothers and my mom has very similar stories paved the way for us. But, you know, when you think about, especially who you serve at Mile High United Way, how does that serve the single mothers out there? Right. I mean, they don't, they're not, they don't have a husband helping them. They're doing it on their own. Absolutely. And I think as we look, and we also know if this past year has shown us anything, it's, it's glared a light on what you and I always knew and, and the Mile High United Way has always known is it is not equal for everybody. There is not equity in our communities and particularly when you look at women um, and when you look at what's happening with the statistics of women who are losing their jobs more than men who are not able um, to go back into the workforce because they're because of childcare. And you're right, if you're a single mom, so we, you and I still have a lot of work to do, yeah. but I stand very proudly on the shoulders of my mother and your mother to say we're not done, but boy, are we ahead of the game of where we have been, but we have a long way to go. Well, cheers to strong women and cheers to fighting the good fight. And I am so happy to know you and proud of the work that you're doing at Mile High United Way. So plug for donation because it's such an incredible organization and especially right now, especially the work that you're doing for women. So thank you for fighting the good fight. Um, okay, so here's to the questions. And we ask these questions because there's so many lessons in the answers. And I know you've spoken to our members before about your journey and you have an incredible one, but tell us about a time in your life when you've persevered and how you got through it. I think the one that I keep going back to because it was the most unexpected one and we all have have journeys and unexpected twists and turns and I know you know what I'm gonna say was four years ago when um, literally what seemed like out of the blue for me was diagnosed with with breast cancer and started a health journey that was completely um, unexpected and was an 18 month um, journey that um, threatened not only everything I, I believed in, but also my very strength and ability to in on some days say, can I really do this? Am I going to be able to, to um, get through this? And I think it was a time where I really needed to understand um, that I can't do things by myself that it is okay and more than okay to ask for support and to ask for, uh, for help. Um, for me to really understand in a way, because I thought I did given the work that I did, but really truly understand the privilege that I have, mm. um, the privilege of access to healthcare, the privilege of access to unbelievable resources um, and to really understand that not, again, I thought I understood it, but that not every woman, not every family has the support, the resources, the access that I do and why it is okay and more than okay to look to the people that love you and support you and say, I need some help. And that, ha that has shaped how I how I look at my life, how I look at my work, um, and how I look at the privilege that I have. And it was, it was a journey and a journey in many ways that I'm still on. Ugh. Well, and you know, typical Christine Bonero style, I remember going through a rough time in my life um, and in my role at the time. And I remember you would pick up the phone like when you were in treatment and talk to me and be there for me. And, you know, it comes so full circle, but I have to ask you, because I think that this is something that women in particular struggle with. I think sometimes we don't have a problem saying I'm struggling or I need help, but then when people offer it, we don't take it. How did you do that? I could not, I could not agree <laughs> more as uh, I couldn't agree more. And that's something I had to, to learn and, and to understand 
two things, um, that it was obviously a gift to me, but I also understood that it was a gift back to the person who loved me and wanted to be support. And if there was any lesson, it was to be able to say, I do need help. And yes, please, I will accept that, yeah. that help. And again, that has informed my work, the way I live, I hope my, my life now. And it was probably the biggest, um, the biggest lesson for me was to say yes. And um, not just thank you, but to say yes, and then be able to take that help because I needed it. Right. It's so true. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to take that away from this conversation of it's not just about helping me. It's about helping them yeah. become who they want to be. That's really good advice. Exactly. And, um, and now I, I know. So, um, but a journey friend. Yes. Well, and, and you are cancer free now, right? I am. I uh, just hit my four year mark. So coming up on that magic five year, Mark, and again, grateful every single day. Was it hard to, I mean, did you at any point, were you concerned about, you know, your, your work or your job or, you know, there's that fear of, oh my gosh, if I tell people they're going to think I'm not going to be able to work yes. anymore, what will that look like? And I know going through hard times, work is a reprieve sometimes I and mean, it feels good. Were you? It, it does. Oh, and, you, and that was the biggest thing I was up. Uh, one of the big things I was uh, afraid of was, would I not be needed? Would my team or my board, um, again, in wanting to support me, not include me anymore? Would there be a place for me when I was, was done? Um, and the greatest gift was the team of people that I worked with who um, always made space for me, always told me that I was um, needed, even when they knew that there wasn't much I could do, they would call and ask me. Um, that Mile High United Way team that surrounded me for those 18 months are ve were very much part of getting me healthy because they allowed me. I look back at it and I'm like, I was of no help to you whatsoever. I just thought I was, but you made me feel like I was, and then created space for me um, to come back. So they gave me an amazing, as did the board, an amazing gift. And I know that that was a big part of my, my healing, but I was very afraid of telling people for that reason. Well, and what an incredible journey. And I am 100% convinced that your culture was so strong because you were able to do that, right? And I think that that is a gift that women bring, and you know, men and women bring gifts to the workplace, but I do think it's a gift that women bring to the workplace that they can be vulnerable and you can still have things going on in your life and still work and still add value and all of those things. So thank you for sharing that. And, and thank you for being brave um, at the time and sharing it with everyone in the workplace and creating a strong culture. Um, okay. What is a mantra that you live by? Well, it is very much reflective in the conversation that you and I are having. It is remembering and saying to myself, I am not alone. I am not alone and I'm not. And it's, um, again, during that journey, but I think also during this past year, that has been a journey for our community, that um, we are not alone. You know, Governor Polis said, we are in this together. Uh, the Mile High United Way says all the time, we are a community united. And I used to think, oh, that's a nice little slogan. But for me, that is actually what has carried me through to know that I am not alone. And I only need to pick up the phone and call you, Kristen Blessman, or call a colleague or call my family. And I am always overwhelmed by the response that I get back of someone saying, no, you're not alone. I'm right here too. Mm. Just hearing you say that, I took like a deep breath and went, oh. yeah. I'm one of those people that panics, you know, like, oh my gosh, 
I'm not doing anything. I'm not planning anything. I'm just sitting here by myself. You know, it's just like having that in your head is really important right now. It, it is. And it may look different. It may be looking like this, like a Zoom meeting or, uh, but we live in an amazing state. We live in an amazing community. Um, you and I are part of an amazing organization led by by you and um, the members of, of the chamber. Um, that is why I love these conversations. And that's what I hang on to is, oh, I'm not alone. I just have to pick up the phone and say, hi. And sometimes I don't even know what I'm asking for, but the fact that you or friends and family answer the phone is what has gotten me through. Oh, thank you so much for sharing, Christine. I appreciate this. And I know our members as always are gonna love hearing from you. We're just blessed. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Proud to be your friend, proud to be a member and counting on that glass of wine. That's the other thing that's gotten me through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you.